All right, uh, it seems the majority of people are here and uh, we start the session and uh, if we have more people, they are welcome to join us. All right, um, before I start the session, I want to ensure that you guys can clearly hear me. Uh, so I appreciate if you can uh, use the panel and raise your hand if you can clearly hear my voice. All right, thank you so much for confirming. Uh, I put everyone on a mute, so if you have any questions, please feel free to um, use the chat box and send the questions through the chat, and I'll be answering those at the end of the presentation. Also, you can send your um, technical questions to our um, general email, which I'm going to provide it at the end of the presentation. All right, uh, so we start uh, the session. As you guys know, today we're going to talk about MyDeskGen. MyDeskGen is a general finite element tool which used for designing uh, modeling analysis and design of building and general structures. So before I start the um, uh, software itself, I'm going to briefly explain about our company. We are uh, Midasoft. We are the branch office of company Midas IT, which is located in, back, uh, in Seoul, South Korea. But I'm calling you, uh, talking to you from the New York office. Uh, we are, as of today, we are the largest CAE company in terms of developing the uh, civil engineering and mechanical engineering software uh, with more than 450 engineers and developers work together uh, to develop different type of uh, software. So we have totally 15 software, but what we're going to talk today is only our uh, general and building uh, software, my guess, Jen. Okay. So I put the presentation in um, a couple of categories as you can see here. We're going to talk about the user, uh, graphical user interface, talking about the um, generating the model, talking about applying the load and boundary and the options that we have available, also the different type of analysis and uh, showing you how you can extract the result, what type of output uh, do we have, and finally talking about the design uh, capabilities and showing you uh, what type of uh, buildings, uh, what type of walls, slabs, and foundation could be uh, designed with my desk gen. All right, starting by the graphical user interface, what you can see here is the uh, main graphical user interface of Midas. As you can see in the top, we have the uh, classic uh, menu, file, edit, view, where you can easily access to them and uh, use them for modeling for applying the load and boundaries and uh, running the analysis and extracting the results. So all the options are available in the main menu. Then in the bottom of uh, right below that we have the reboot menu. So the reboot menu is uh, put there to make it easier for the user to access to different icons faster and more intuitive. So uh, in the reboot menu we uh, group different icons under the same tab which uh, they are all related to each other and easily you can just select the tab and underneath those you can find the uh, different icons. So I open the software and uh, you get better feeling about uh, those options. So that's the ribbon menu is actually making it um, very uh, easy for the user to find different icons and use it during the modeling. On the left side we have the tree menu with the tree menu is actually a very unique tool uh, which help you during the modeling and how it's going to help you uh, whatever you model uh, it could be the geometry it could be the uh, material or section property or the boundaries everything that you model it's going to be listed here so you're going to see the summary of entire your model right in the left side and uh, that make it so easy for you to access to different options for example if you want to change the uh, sections of let's say you want to change the, uh, your beams okay so you can select those beams and from the list of the section you can select the new one drag it and drop it on the page and gonna change it instantly so you just make it so easy then we have the message window in the bottom uh, while you are doing the modeling if you do any mistakes or two type of analysis for example are not compatible software gonna provide you a um, uh, error or warning message uh, which this is not correct and also provide you the solution for that so it's gonna help you to uh, resolve the problem yourself 
Also, you can have a couple of windows at the same time as you can see here in this image. So you can have the uh, you know input and also output at the same time. We have the table table options both for input and output. So our um, software is very compatible with uh, um, Microsoft uh, Excel. So uh, whatever number that you have in Excel, you can simply copy paste it here, and whatever. Uh, ex, um, output that you can get from Midas, you can simply export it to Excel. So in this way, um, it's, it's become very easy for you if you want to use your own spreadsheet or you want to do anything with the um, data that, I mean, the uh, result that you obtain um, that make it so easy for you to transfer the data. All right, so let me open the software itself and then show you uh, the uh, GUI of the software. So what you see here, is the main graphical user interface of Midas Gen. Um, as, you, as I mentioned in the top, we have the classical um, menu where you can simply access, for example, under the model, you can go to the properties and define the material. So that's one option that you can simply select it from here. Another options that we have are the uh, Reboot menu. So in the Reboot menu, for example, if you want to create a node, you can simply go to the node and then select on the create here you can enter the coordinate. So the dialog box technically opens on the left side and it makes it so easy for you. Then you have you can see your entire your model and also you have room at the left side which you can you now switch from one to another uh, tab. Uh, let me uh, for example show you how you can define the material properties or sectional property. So if I click on the sections I can say add and right here you can see the different type of sections. So these are the um, kind of standard type of sections that mostly used in buildings like angles, like channel, eye shapes, boxes, and rest of them that you can see here. For example, if I select the eye section, I have option to go with the user defined, which will be my own girder. But if you want to use the standard sections based on the code, you can simply select the codes from here. If you are following the American code, so you can go with the AISC sections. If you are doing the using the British code, you can go with the British or you know uh, um, other countries' codes are also available here. For example, if I go with the British code, I can simply select the section from their library. And if you want to modify this section to make it local to your country, you can simply go with the user defined and uh, change the dimensions, the height, the width, and the thickness of the web and flanges. And once you created this section, for example, we call it section 1, uh, this will be saved in your library. And anytime in the future that you need this um, section, you can simply import it and then use that. Okay? This is the uh, user defined or data from the database. Uh, we can also enter the general sections here and the software cal calculates the property for us, sectional property for us, and we can use that. We have a steel reinforced concrete where you can uh, use it for your column. For example, this one, you can use it for your column or you can use it for your pile if you have any. So um, these are the different types that you can use it. So it can be a combination of steel and concrete. Also, we have a tapered section. So the tapered section is technically when you have different size in the beginning and the end of the section. For example, if the beginning, this is too big, if the beginning is this size and the end is this large, so you can simply um, uh, define this by taper section and uh, the, both the height and the width of the section can be changed during this transition. And this change can be linear, parabolic, or cubic. All right. And then uh, finally, we have the composite section, where the composite section, uh, you define the uh, eye girder uh, along with the concrete topping. So it's going to make it um, easier to do the modeling. OK. So yeah, that's the uh, options for the um, Reboot menu. So you can see how easily, for example, if I go to the load, I have all different type of loads that I may use. It could be a self-weight, it could be a point load, it could be a displacement load, it could be a, a hydrostatic pressure, or it's going to be a, a temperature loading. Anything that you have, it can be simply uh, selected from this Reboot menu.
Then we have uh, these uh, three menu at the left, which, uh, as I mentioned, it just make it so easy for you to access to your elements or whatever you want to select. For example, under the structure and the element, I have a truss element, which shows me, it's going to highlight it for me, and I can see that these uh, uh, cross frames or X braces are used from by, by uh, trusses. And if I double click on the beam, it's going to be the rest of the structures, which is the beams and columns are modeled with the beam elements. If you want to um, select the um, different section, so you can simply um, select it from here or you can double click on that, it's going to show you which element having this section. So it's going to make it so easy for you to access. But now I want to show you one other option. Just uh, let me zoom in here. For example, I want to change the, um, this, um, uh, this beam at the top proof. So what I do, I just select this element and say, uh, from the tree menu, I have a list of the sections. So what I do, I just drag it from here and drop it here. And automatically, as you can see, changes the dimension. And if you don't like this size or you want to change it again, it's going to be exactly the same process. Or you now you can simply undo it and it goes back to the original shape. So these are all options available for you. So you see how easily you can uh, change the sections quickly. Um, and um, you know it's gonna be the same thing for material properties all right and uh, another thing is the um, selection toolbar at the, at the top where you have different options for selecting you can select all you can unselect all and there are different options for different type of geometry and different cases uh, also for the viewing option you can see the isometric view you can see the top view you can see the side view and also the front view. But uh, any time that you want to rotate the structure, you can simply rotate it 360 degree at any angle that you want. And you can place it at uh, any point that uh, you want to see. Also, let's say you want to just work on the uh, top floor. What you can do, you can simply select this part, top floor, and say activate. So if you activate that, the only this part of the structure will be activated for you. And whatever change you want to do, whatever work you want to do on this part, you can simply uh, finish it. And then you can bring entire the structure back and uh, have the complete model. All right. So that was a general introduction about the GUI. So I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, presentation and show you more options of the my gesture. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send them uh, through the chat option. All right, this is uh, more talking about the uh, viewing option and different table options that we have, which I already showed you different type of mode shapes, uh, sorry, the viewing uh, shapes, and also the uh, options for seeing through the elements, which call it transparency. So if you have such a structure, and you have a glass windows or any other, stru any other uh, structural elements uh, that you want to see what's going on inside them, you can simply give the transparency to them and uh, easily can see the elements inside those guys. Also, uh, the Tecla and Revit are two software which are uh, being used for, I mean, in um, the building industry. So if you, are, if you guys are using the Tecla and Revit, so you can simply uh, communicate or transfer the file between uh, these two software and my desk chain. So it's very easy. For example, if you are working on Tecla, you can bring the uh, model into my desk chain and then run the analysis, run the design, and then take it back to the Tecla. The same thing for the Revit. Also, there are other uh, parts. We can also import the data from the AutoCAD and also SAP 2000 and uh, you know, Stat Pro. So if you have your model already created in those guys, those uh, software, you can simply just uh, import them into my desk gen. It's going to save a lot of your time. All right, the same thing that I showed you. Also, um, not only we can exchange the data between the my desk gen and the other software, we can also uh, exchange the data between the my desk gen and my desk gen. For example, if you have, let's imagine you have this 
project. You have three towers and uh, you assign each of your engineers to do one of those. So after each one finished the uh, modeling, you can merge the models to each other. For example, this was one part, this was one part, and another third part. So you merge all three of them to come up with the uh, final models. It's very easy. We just do it uh, through the um, uh, the text messaging, uh, text uh, uh, command shell. All right. So that was all about the uh, graphical interface. Now let's talk about the generating the data. All right. I want to talk about the material and also the sections that we have and other options like a diaphragm and all. For the database, uh, the material from the database, we can model the steel, concrete, any user-defined uh, uh, material, which uh, could be isometric or orthotropic. Here are the list of the database uh, codes that we can select the database from. For example, we have British code, we have ASTM, we have uh, European code, we have uh, German DIN, and the rest of those. So if you are following any of these, it could be easily uh, selected based on the standard. And even if you don't see the codes that you need, you can also go with the user defined and enter the material property like a modulus of elasticity, Poisson ratio, and also weight density. Along with the uh, normal material properties, we can define also the time dependent material property, like a creep and shrinkage, like a compressive strength of concrete. So these two uh, are nonlinear nonlinear behavior and easily can be modeled in Midas Gen. Uh, by following different codes or you can enter them as a user defined. This is a, uh, a section, I mean uh, libraries for section. As I showed you, we have different codes which you can go through them and select different standard shapes. But in any case that you are designing some building or any other general structures and you are using a uh, irregular sections like this, which you cannot find them in the code, uh, you can simply model it in uh, AutoCAD and then bring it into Midas Gen, or you can easily create them in Midas Gen itself, and software calculates the sectional property for you and uses exactly the same shape in your model. Also, uh, we have um, Wizard, which uh, Wizard gonna make it so easy for the user to create the modeling. For example. If you have an arch system like this, or you have a truss, or you have frames, or you have a uh, shell um, um, elements, you can simply use the uh, this wizard, and the software can create the uh, geometry for you in a very short time. And the point is, whatever you do here, uh, it can be modified later on. For example, if you are using a truss element, or you are using a uh, you know a beam element. Later on, if you want to change the coordinates of the nodes, you can simply do that. If you want to rotate them, if you want to do anything, it could be simply done. All right, uh, another option that we have is the uh, automatic generation of the uh, those diaphragm at each floor. So it's very simple. You don't need to do any uh, additional action. Uh, when you are creating, we have a wizard which creates the uh, building. So let's say you have five. Um, story building so we create the first story and then copy the rest of them to the um, I mean generate the rest of them based on the plan that you have it could be different height size heights or it could be uh, all of them having the same heights all right and when you're doing that software automatically considers the diaphragm for the floors but if you want to not to consider them you can just simply uh, click on this and then select not to consider we have also the mesh generation. For example, if you are designing a parking, um, you can simply model the uh, entire structure. Uh, also, uh, you know, generate this floor. And for the floor, if you have a irregular shape and you want to do it, in, uh, I mean, mesh them, Midas Gen can easily handle it for you. Or you have any irregular shapes, let's say like this uh, uh, frame, it can be simply uh, meshed. All right, let's talk about the load and boundary conditions. Here are the different type of loads that we can apply on uh, our structures in Midas Gen. So I'm just pinpointing on uh, some of those, which is more important for, uh, you know, building industry. 
So definitely the self void is important. You can apply the nodal load. You can apply the beam load. And uh, most importantly, we have the floor load. So the floor load, I'm going to later on explain you how easily can help you um, in terms of like reducing your work uh, load and also reducing the analysis time. So that's a special uh, load that we have, floor load. We can do, uh, apply the pre-stressing and post-tensioning if you are doing the, for example, pre-stress columns or you do the post-tension slabs. All of them can be simply modeled. We can apply the um, seismic load and also the wind load and those could be both dynamic and static. So as you can see, we can apply the static wind load based on the code so you can select different um, uh, design codes and based on them you can define the parameter on that and uh, as you can see here, the uh, profiles will be generated for you. I'm going to show you more details of those. Also, we can apply the uh, cover entire the seismic design for that. So the, uh, one of the importance of the uh, MIDAS gen and the benefits that it has for you is that you can model entire the structure with your, you know, your superstructure, with the substructure, with the foundation, all of them in the same model. You can apply the same load on all of those. You can apply the same load combination of those. Everything together will be uh, modeled. You can uh, run the analysis on entire the structure with the foundation, everything, and then you can uh, see the more reliable or more uh, realistic uh, results. So um, I just say that to mention we can completely cover the seismic design as well. We can do the pushover analysis. We can do response spectrum and also different time history. If your um, country is in a seismic zone, so you definitely need to follow those. All right, uh, here is the floor load example. So uh, what happens if you have such a floor? Um, in most of the software, you have to model the uh, floor itself to consider the self-weight or you have to apply the beam load separately individually on each beam yourself to make it uh, you know make it look like this which is a really time taking or also um, you know for the analysis time it takes more more time to run the analysis in my desk gen uh, what you can do you can just simply define the live load and the dead load for example let's say 1.2 live uh, dead load plus 1.6 live load you define this as a, um, a floor load and then just select this area like 1.11 you can just select the outside of this area and the software automatically calculates the corresponding uh, floor load based on the tributary area and applies on the structure so that's a very helpful option uh, which you now can uh, reduce your workload and also reduce the analysis time. We, have, we can also apply the pressure as you can see on the right side if you have the um, you know such a beams with the openings and the stiffeners whatever you have you can apply the um, you know different type of uh, pressure loads. Alright so this is the one that I mentioned uh, for static wind and seismic load as per codes. So here you see the list of the design codes uh, which you can follow to generate these two profiles. All right, as you can see here, you just enter the parameter and then the seismic load profile will be, uh, will be uh, applied to you. The same thing for the wind load. And the good point is, um, even though you are following the code, um, you can also uh, manipulate the data. If you want to customize it to your uh, region or your area, you can also do that and also that's a, uh, there's a user input uh, user defined inputs for static wind and uh, seismic load which you can simply uh, grab your data from Excel and then paste it into MIDAS and gonna uh, be created in a second another thing we have uh, many dynamic load options so that might not be very general but in case that you need to do the dynamic analysis for example if you want to study the floor vibration, uh, a lot of software cannot do that, but you can simply uh, do this in MyDestGen. It's easily handled and going to provide you a very reliable and accurate result for the uh, design of the slabs in this way. All right, uh, you can apply the uh, hydrostatic pressure as you can see here. Uh, for example, if you are designing a 
retaining wall uh, you can or you have like a foundation or whatever uh, type of um, you know walls or stuff which is embedded in the soil you can simply apply the hydrostatic pressure as you can see here also for seismic analysis software can automatically convert the self weight into a convert the self weight into masses which just make it so easy all right that that was a type of load that we have now I want to quickly uh, touch base some of the um, boundary conditions that we have so definitely for the boundary conditions we have the regular uh, supports like you can have a simply support you can have a fixed support or pin support that's completely to you but those are uh, available on top of those we have options uh, that you can model for example your base isolator you can model your uh, soil structure interaction so um, you know we can model the rigid links you can apply the elastic links so all those options are available to you and also if you have uh, for example you have a mat foundation you can model the mat foundation along with the entire day building and uh, to simulate the soil underneath that you can use the uh, uh, springs so we have linear and nonlinear springs which you can apply right underneath the uh, the building uh, under the uh, foundation mat foundation to simulate the soil and then you can see that interaction between the uh, between the foundation and the soil easily all right so um, these diagrams, I mean these um, animations actually, you are showing you um, how the base isolator is going to help us in terms of reducing the, um, you know, energy goes to the uh, building itself, to the beams and column. For example, on the left side, I have a fixed point uh, building. On the right side, I have one with the base isolator. So it's a little slow, on the, I think, online, but you can take all these animations directly from my desk gen and it's going to make it so uh, beautiful for you if you want to put it in your uh, presentation all right here's another example for example if you have a you know some walls which is embedded in the soil you can simply uh, enter the soil parameter and also the dimension of the wall and the software automatically generates the springs for you so it just make it so easy for you you don't need to go to the geotechnical engineers and ask for the for example these soil springs you can simply use the Midas gen to generate all those equations for you same thing here uh, this is the one I explained if you have your math foundations you can simply model these springs um, in Midas gen all right uh, let's uh, talk about the analysis capability. So far, we saw how we can generate the entire structure, uh, the generating the geometry using those wizards, and also we saw how we can apply the different type of loads. Now is the time to uh, talk about the analysis capability. All right. So what you see here is the list of um, the analysis um, which my desk gen can handle. I just talk about some of those, like static analysis, which is very basic. We can do the dynamic analysis. Uh, we do also high-end analysis like geometry nonlinearity or material nonlinearity, but I don't want to talk about them today. Uh, we do the buckling analysis with the pushover and uh, you know many other lists that you can see here. But what will be the more important for um, you know conventional buildings like a uh, four or five um, uh, story buildings would be one of them would be probably the construction stages which you can simulate every single uh, stage of construction easily and exactly as it is in the uh, real life uh, you, another thing would be seismic uh, sorry the wind and seismic loads which we can apply them as a um, you know static loads Another thing will be floor load, uh, which you can just run the um, linear static uh, forces. And there are different type of analysis if you are interested. Also, if you do a post-tension buildings or girders, you can simply uh, do it in like this. All right. In case that you do a, a high-rise building, one important case is a column shortening, which uh, Midas Civil has a special tool for this, which you can simply use them. 
and also this one is the flow vibration which we do it through the time history analysis so if you have more questions about this please ask me I don't want to explain that much about the uh, flow vibration because it's not that common for all the uh, engineers and it's not needed for all the buildings this one is also showing you the uh, pushover analysis so for pushover analysis we can uh, do the performance based design and following the FEMA curve and then find the performance points and all those will be all provided by uh, Midas and uh, you can define the uh, inelastic hinge uh, locations on your beam and your column and as you can see you can push entire the structure and see where it's gonna fail and as you can see in this uh, animation you see there are different colors each of these points are the possible plastic uh, uh, hinges that may uh, happen in this structure and as you can see they have different colors which means this blue one for example is yielded or gone to the plastic zone and the rest of them are still elastic so we can push it until we find the uh, mechanism of the um, you know structure so for the boundaries um, as I mentioned we can apply the linear and nonlinear boundaries and uh, uh, also you can model those base isolator as you can see it's gonna be completely nonlinear model that's based on the what you get from the uh, you know the companies that general I mean creating these base isolators so this um, video also show you um, how the you know load applies on the structure after you have these nonlinear boundaries all right and I have a couple of examples for you. For example, this one shows the material nonlinearity, which you know um, you can see how much deformation can it have, and then it goes from the elastic to plastic. This one shows the uh, nonlinear geometry. As you can see, we have we could have a large displacement, but it's not required for all buildings. Uh, also, if you have a uh, masonry building and you wanna, for example, study the, where the cracking happens. You can simply model it and uh, you know this uh, software shows you where the cracks happening for example in the concrete all right uh, so let's talk about the uh, post processing or extracting the results this is uh, probably the interesting part for you because what you did so far was the modeling you see how easily you can create the model how you can uh, make entire the structure foundation mat foundation piles everything that you have in the same model you can model every uh, apply the load to entire structure and run the analysis on entire structure and technically you do uh, I mean you run the analysis one time and you can get the result for every single part of the structure now let's see what type of output we can extract from the uh, Midas gen Midas gen provide you different type of outputs one of them is graphical as you can see right here so it shows you for example the bending moments like the shear forces and then the displacement or the drift all of those uh, are shown graphically you can also if you are interested to know for example this beam how the um, bending moment is changing this beam you can click on that and it's going to show you more details here so you can see the bending moment shear uh, in any directions and actual forces uh, right as a uh, free body diagrams right here and you can find the maximum point minimum point you can scroll to the left and right this is one uh, option another option is uh, software give you like uh, you know nice uh, if you have a solid or you have a plate you're gonna get uh, nice contours as you can see here you can manipulate these contours and uh, you know um, use them for the design of those elements okay also if you have a solid you model the solid part you can simply cut through a certain point and uh, see what is the stress value stress level in each of those so uh, another set of output is uh, the table output so whatever you got in the um, result you can see them graphically then you can simply uh, get those values in the table format so whatever you get you have in the tables it's gonna be manipulated it could be simply sorted as per 
um, your preference. For example, you get the, for example, for element one or two, you get the axial force, shears, and bending and torsion. So if you want to find the, what is the maximum bending moment in amongst the, all the elements, you can right click and sort it and it's going to sort it for you ascending or descending order. So it's a very similar to um, uh, Excel itself. But if you want to uh, put them in the Excel, you can simply right click, go to the Excel, uh, export to Excel and you have all the uh, values in a nice, I mean, formatted shape in the Excel. And the third type of output that software provides is the uh, um, animation format. So you, I showed you a couple of those, but uh, for many of many type of uh, output, you can generate the animation and easily use it for your presentation. Okay, um, so after doing all these options, doing the uh, modeling analysis, and um, you know extracting the result. Software give you, gives you an option to generate the report for you. Generating the report is a very sophisticated report uh, which software generated in a uh, Word document, as you can see here. And in this uh, document, you can have all the inputs, all the sectional property, geometry, material, everything. And also for output, you can uh, put everything that you want. For example, you want the diagram of the um, bending moment for every single element or entire the structure, displacement, everything that you have in output, it could be also simply uh, put in the report. And it's just so easy. You can just have the list of all those options there, and then you can drag it and drop it on the word, and it's going to automatically generate it for you. And just make it so easy for you to go through the, um, um, you know, the report. And if you want to change it, for example, if you change the one of the uh, beams section, software automatically updates the report for you. So you don't need to delete that one and then uh, do it again. Software automatically take care of that part. So in this case also, it can save a lot of your time. All right, let's talk about the um, design options. As I mentioned, in Midas Gen, you can um, not only you can do the complete analysis and satisfy all the analysis required by different codes, you can also do the complete design. So here are the list of the uh, designs that we have for uh, RC design, I mean reinforced concrete and also steel. Uh, so you see as per ACI 318 for the um, reinforced concrete, we have the latest code and also previous codes. We have the British code, Canadian code, and uh, most probably, um, if you guys are following the Euro code, British code, or ACI, uh, those options are completely available for you. You can follow them. For the slab design, we have also, um, uh, we had Euro code, but recently we added uh, a couple more options for the slab design. And also for steel, we have AASC, and you, ha you can see the list of them here. Both for American, European uh, code are available here. Also, we do the footing design. So uh, technically, if you think about it, you can uh, generate an entire structure. You can run different type of analysis. And also, you can design an entire structure as well. So you can software can design the beams and columns for you. It can design the wall for you. It can design the slab for you. It can design the footing for you. Everything in the same package. Everything in uh, like just one model. So just make it so easy for you. Um, uh, in terms of like, you know, you don't need to take the result from one software to another or now using a couple of more software to do design this one or that one. Everything is done right in my chain. So I want to just show you a couple of those design options. So here um, I have the slide showing you the, uh, on the left side, I have the, the, the column design where you see the software generates the uh, bending moment, uh, actual force and bending moment interaction. Uh, both in 2D and 3D and also provide you with the uh, result output right here. If they are okay or they are not good, it's going to list here for you. It's going to automatically design it for you and it's going to tell you what will be the best, uh, you know, reinforcement required for this column and what will be the best size for them. The same thing for the footing design. So you can simply model your footing, give the dimensions, and it's going to provide you the best uh, reinforcement. All right, we have the optimal design feature, and also we have the 
uh, designed for the um, uh, steel structures. It's going to be the same thing. So for the steel structures, for example, you have the beam software. Um, if, if certain elements are not satisfying the need of the code, software can search in the uh, library and then find the best sections. It's going to give you a list of the sections. For example, right here, uh, let's say 10 sections satisfy these needs with the different factors, uh, which shows the, uh, you know, the, uh, the best sections for you. So you can simply select one or any of those and automatically uh, replace it with the current um, elements. The same thing for the slabs and wall. So software can design the wall easily for you and also the slab. Uh, here is my uh, uh, contact information. Um, please feel free to ask the question. I'll be so happy to provide you all the answers with the you know more documents for you uh, to show you how my the civil how my the gen can be used and uh, you know be more beneficial for you and your project. Thank you so much for your time and giving the opportunity to. Uh, present you this software and hopefully we're going to see you uh, uh, in the near future. Thank you and have a good day.